So I'm here today with Matt Teske, founder and CEO of Chargeway. Chargeway is an electric vehicle charging app that helps you locate charging stations and figure out charging. It does a lot more. There's a lot of apps out there that will just show you where charging stations are. Um, but Chargeway goes way beyond that. And I've had Matt on State of Charge before when we uh, met just organically at the New York Auto Show last year to talk about what Chargeway does. But there's a lot of new things going on at Chargeway right now. And, and Matt just launched Chargeway 2.0. So I thought it would be a good idea to bring him back on again. He could tell us what's going on with Chargeway, what the uh, improvements are, and so forth. So, uh, Matt, welcome. Thanks for coming on State of Charge. Thanks for having me, Tom. It's good to see you again. It's always good to see you. You know, as I mentioned in the last time we got together, uh, you and I have known each other for a while. You're one of the uh, maybe OGs of electric vehicle charging. You've been back, you know, uh, when did we first met? 15, 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. Somewhere um, around I there, yeah. I think you came out with the first version. Was it in 17, 2017 ish? Um, yeah, well, 2017 is when we announced Chargeway and, and basically what it could be as a solution. And then a yeah. year later in 2018 is when we introduced uh, version 1.0 of our software. So. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and, and now we've got 2.0 and that's what we're here to talk about today. So we'll just jump right into it. So what's new with this new version? What, what have you been up to since we last talked in New York? Uh, a lot. <laughs> so yeah, when we saw each other in New York, we were already basically, you know, neck deep in the redesign for version 2.0 for Chargeway. And really what it is, is, is we redesigned everything from the interface side from the ground up. So it's effectively to users, it's going to feel like a brand new app, but the principle is still the same that we're using our colors for plug types and numbers for power levels. But we really work to create a lot more uh, you know, intelligence inside of the app for doing a lot of thinking on behalf of drivers. That was really the goal was to take a lot of what we had learned from feedback from drivers and a lot of our utility and dealer partners the last four years or so and include that feedback into what could be an updated and smarter version of Chargeway. Okay. So, you know, we all know there's a lot of apps out there that help you find charging stations. And even a lot of the uh, cars now have built in their navigation so they can find charging stations. So uh, what separates Chargeway? Why is it better than say a plug share or, you know, using charge points map or the navigation in my uh, Ford F-150 Lightning? What, what sets you apart? I think the biggest thing is is any what we do is we do take the information and data that many of those other software platforms or in vehicle software solutions have, and we take the same data, but we don't just spit it back out to the user. We don't just say, okay, here's some engineering terminology that you have to you know maybe learn. We take that information and then we ask ourselves, what is this user going to need from this information based on the car that they're driving? And instead of forcing people to have to figure out weird little scenarios related to is my battery 400 volt or 800 volt and will i get the max kw at this station we just do all the thinking for you and then translate that back to you using our interface of colors and numbers so you can then more effectively understand that one station across the street from another might not be the one you need based on your vehicle's again voltage or the amperage of the connector at that location and so you can choose to say i want to go to that green six instead of that green five without having to worry about why those might be different. We do all that thinking for you. Okay. And and that's important because, you know, I've, I've had followers reach out to me and say, Hey Tom, I uh, pulled up to an EV go station and it says it's a 200 kilowatt station, but my EV is only pulling 78 kilowatts. You know, is there yeah. something wrong? And you know, the, the networks don't really do anything to help people understand that, it's based on your battery's architecture, the voltage. So right. if, if I pull into, uh, if I, uh, you know, load my chargeway app, enter my vehicle in that you, mm -hmm. what, what it'll do is it knows the battery voltage and all that. And it'll tell me what the maximum I can pull from every specific station. That's that's it is we've we've looked at enough of the information that's out there and we can and we track and catalog it. So we know exactly what's happening based on not only the architecture of your vehicle's battery pack, but also the architecture of the hardware that of each of these stations that you're going to. So, for example, we we are seeing things like at a Tesla magic dock where you can take a non Tesla vehicle and plug in. If you're a 400 volt vehicle, you're going to have the opportunity to go up to 150 kilowatt at that magic dock because of the architecture of Tesla systems. 
But if you're driving an 800 or 900 volt architecture vehicle, you may only get up to about 70 or 80 kilowatt because of the voltage res restrictions and constrictions. So these are things that we just do the thinking for on behalf of the drivers. So instead of we, we've concluded years ago, and I think we're seeing the evidence of it now, that if we keep just throwing max kilowatt at people, they take it at face value and just expect to get it, regardless of what they know about their own car or the station voltage or amperage or not. So it's not a very effective way to communicate. So we just do all that thinking for you so you can then choose to navigate where you want to go based on the vehicle you selected into Chargeway. Right. And one of the things that um, separates Chargeway that I've noticed from all of the other apps are you don't just get pins on a map. You, you show power levels and they're right. color coded. Could you explain right. a little bit about why did you do this um, numbering and color coding system? Long ago, what we kept seeing was that the pins on the map had a lot of details hidden underneath them. And you had to click on the pin to see a pop up to then see more information about what that might be offering at that location. So at face value for someone who doesn't isn't an early adopter and did not want to learn all the details, you just think everything's the same. And then you start to discover that that's not true. And what it then creates is a bad user experience with an electric car. And so our goal is to make it so that people have a great user experience with any electric car they choose. And they have transparency around that. And two of the primary factors around what will dictate your happiness around the charge is, can I actually connect at this location based on the plug type? And so we will color code the plug type. So that's what the colors you see on the map, green being J1772 and CCS, red being Tesla and Nax, and then blue being Chatamo. And then the numbers you see on the map, one through seven, denote power levels. So if you see a higher number, that station offers you more power. And then we associate a max power your vehicle can charge at on the screen as well. So you know that you have a level six vehicle and you can pull up to that station that might have level seven chargers. But if it also has level six, well, then you know, well, I can choose either. I'm not going to get any better than six. Right, right. And, and I noticed it also... Your app also tells you how long you need to charge there, right? To this video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. That, that, that's something that's important, too, because people don't really know most of the time when they pull up to a DC fast charger, uh, how until they're really you know comfortable with the vehicle, how long they need to charge. Right, yeah. So one of the features we, we had in version one of Chargeway is we actually had a charge time estimator that was really designed to educate people. You could then scroll through different power levels inside the charge time estimator and change your state of charge and your battery to see what your estimated charge time would be. What we've done now in version two is we've combined that feature directly onto the station map. So any pin that you then click on on the map will have an estimated charge time for your vehicle based on the state of charge you've chosen for your vehicle. So if you have 10% left and you wanna to go to 80%, you can set that in your vehicle detail screen. And then any pin you click on will then have an estimated charge time based on the station's capability, your car's capability, and your car's charging curve. So again, it's, it's and we, we clarify, it's an estimate, you know. but at the end of the day, this gives people a better understanding of what those power levels will mean for their experience to fill up. And we try our best to be as transparent as possible about what they'll want to know, which is, can I connect and how long do I got to wait? So, Yeah, that, that's great. Now, one of the problems we have with infrastructure here in the U.S. And, and around the world, but it seems like it's worse here, is reliability. Um, oh, yeah. Does, does charge weight account at all? Is there a way, is there a mechanism to uh, built in to uh, know if, this, if that site is having problems? Do people leave comments? Um, how do you know if, because if you can choose from two sites that are like two miles apart, uh, yeah. you want to go to the one that seems like a lot of people saying, great, great. I had a great experience as opposed to one saying all stations broken, station down. Um, how, how does that integrate in? Yeah, so we've we've improved the visibility of what we can see for online and offline stations. So if, if a station is actively able to be used. But then we also have now integrated real-time status for major networks, including EVgo, Electrify America, Blink, Shell Recharge, and even Tesla Superchargers as well. And so this allows you to see in-use, available, or even offline individual chargers at, at those locations, and we're adding more of that. But then to your point, we've always had a mechanism uh, for reporting, but we've made that a little bit more clear now. So we have a review section 
that you can write a review, let drivers know what your feedback is on that location. But also in that same area, you can report a problem directly to a network. So if you know of a charger is having an issue, you simply tap the button, it'll auto populate the address of that station and the subject line of that location and the auto and automatically the customer support from that network. So you can send them an email saying, I know there's a problem right here. So we've done our best to integrate just one click features that people can use in that way. And then drivers can then quickly by tapping on a pin, see what the reviews are at that location, as well as the power level, as well as the available chargers and quantity of chargers. So really we've gone on our way to make that first click very functionally useful to each driver. Awesome. Awesome. Now let me ask you this question with, what appears to be the, the North America, the industry coalescing towards uh, Tesla's connector, the North American charging standard. Mm -hmm. um, and and there's going to be a, it's going to be a period of transition, but it's, it's going to happen over time, I believe at least. Um, all these adapters are going to be coming out. Um, mm -hmm. And I know the way Chargeway was originally set up, you know, it really was focusing on helping you decide where you could charge. We may go to a, a place where almost everybody can charge almost anywhere. Uh, you know, Chatamo cars are going to have some difficulty as that gets kind of phased out in North America. But with the with the adapter, have you given any thought to having that information in charge? We're saying like there are adapters available to allow you to use these stations. You know, you have to purchase them from third parties. Have you given that any thought? Oh yeah, so we have, we have an adapter feature that's built into the app currently that's always been there for Tesla owners. And so we, from the outset, we focused on defaulting to using OEM adapters first because we wanted to see what would happen with the aftermarket and make sure people understood what those options could look like. The aftermarket looks like it's developing out pretty effectively. So there are some good adapter options now for non-Tesla vehicles, but we still see that complication often about people buying a Tesla adapter for their non-Tesla thinking they can go to a supercharger, right? Yeah. So with NAX being introduced and more vehicles being able to use Tesla superchargers directly or with an adapter, there's gonna be a lot to unpack there. So for each vehicle in the chargeway system, we will then always list the OEM certified adapters that are used that can be used for that vehicle. And anytime you activate that adapter, we know which stations will work with that adapter. So a good example is starting next year when we see automakers like Ford introducing the Tesla adapter for using Tesla superchargers, that's not for every Tesla supercharger. And so if you were to choose that adapter for, let's say, a Ford F-150 Lightning, we would only show you the superchargers that work with that adapter because of what's going on in the background with the software. They can't use older superchargers because of mm -hmm. that, but newer ones they can. Chargeway is going to do all that thinking for you by the moment you just say, I want to use my Tesla fast adapter. Then you will only see those Tesla superchargers that work with that adapter. So this is a big part of what our data team is working on regularly is how do we help people not have to really learn all these little tiny pieces and we just do all the thinking for them. That's fantastic. Good to hear. Um, and I didn't know that about the adapters that you're integrating that in. That's really going to be useful because it's going to be a mess out there for a little while with people with CCS cars, you know, trying to figure out what Tesla stations they can use. If you, you know, uh, because as you mentioned, a lot of them, the older ones, they won't be able to use, but you, your chargeway will be, be able to just filter those out. They won't even see them on the, yeah. uh, in the app, which is, which is really cool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's, go ahead. No, I was gonna say that's a big part of it. And even we do that now, for example, for, for Rivian. So we include the Rivian network inside of our system, but we only show you Rivian Adventure fast chargers if you've selected to use a Rivian. You will never see those fast chargers on there because they're software locked to Rivian users. So we see constantly that people are asking about how to, like, how do we navigate this? Why is this happening this way? And other platforms like Google and PlugShare and others they're still just representing, hey, there's a CCS here, go right over. So there's a lot of, we, we've really worked to make it an intelligent system that is simple. So that once you choose your car, it is really tailored to you. And we've done all that crazy thinking for you that normally you'd have to just dig through and figure out how to learn. Well, we've done that for you. That's great. And listen, I haven't used Chargeway 2.0 yet, but I certainly will. Maybe I'll even make a video on it at some point down the future. In the future, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe we'll get together and collaborate on that. I'll do a road trip or yeah. something and use use uh, like charge exclusively uh, from the Chargeway app and, uh, um, you know, use an adapter, try out all the features. So, well, I'll talk yeah. to you about that. So listen, um, I know you're up against it. Uh, what's next for Chargeway? It sounds like you're, you know, 2.0 is really, you know, in good shape. What's next? Well, one of the things that we're really going to be excited about uh, launching here in the coming months is the ability to 
basically just connect your vehicle directly to Chargeway so that you can have control of your vehicle's charging from the Chargeway app. So this will work for multiple vehicle brand makes and models as well. So if you're a multi EV brand family, you could leverage Chargeway as a way to control and monitor and operate two different brands of EVs through one platform that not only gives you the ability to then focus on charging, for example, say at home, but then gives you really, really good visibility for what your public charging would look like. And so we'll be launching a program uh, with Austin Energy starting in Q1 of next year to pilot this out, to have drivers from various brands testing this in Austin. And we're looking to grow that out even faster to more areas around the country as well. So it's, it's really a focus now that we've seen is that we need to really personalize the user experience with charging to each driver based on not only the vehicle they've selected, but also based on their lifestyle. If they have to, if they have the option to fill up at home, they're going to be focusing on charging in a different way for both home charging and public. Whereas if someone has to street park and maybe they rent, their entire world is public charging. And so they have to then go find their fuel, as we say. So our platform is really growing in a way to and be designed to, in a way that it tailors to each of those types of lifestyles, not only the vehicle they select. Awesome. Well, listen, I know you're up against it. You've got uh, some places to go at the LA Auto Show right now. And uh, um, that pretty much does it for me. Uh, let's circle back at some point in the future uh, to yeah. discuss the progress and uh, where you're going. And again, uh, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks again, Tom. I appreciate it too. And I'm uh, looking forward to keeping in touch and for people to download Chargeway 2.0. Yeah, definitely uh, go, go and download it and kick the tires at ChargePoint. Uh, charge point charge way 2.0 you can leave questions in the comment stream of this video if you have any questions for matt matt does uh check out the videos and and responds to people i've noticed that through all the social media platforms you're very active when people have questions or when they post something that's not true you're quick to correct them and uh <laughs> so uh yeah if you have any questions for matt leave them in the comments of this video and uh Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, smash that subscribe button, uh, hit the notification bell, give us a like, all that good stuff. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.